This is KCTV English News. I'm Nick Brontes. A National Assembly member wants to inspect the country's foreign-owned homes, which are concentrated in the capital region and Jeju, to ensure there is no evidence of real estate speculation. Liberty Korea Party Representative Kim Sang-hoon, who sits on the Land, Infrastructure and Transport Committee, analyzed data from July. He discovered that non-Korean individuals or companies at that time owned about 8,300 buildings in the country, covering some 1.6 million square meters of floor space. 2,200 of the buildings were in Seoul, 1,700 were in Gyeonggi-do province, and 760 were in Jeju. Mr. Kim argued for the need to draw measures to investigate possible foreign real estate speculation in the regions, which have in recent years had active housing markets. Jeju students were the top-ranked pupils in the nation in last year's College Scholastic Ability Test. According to a report released Tuesday by the Korea Institute for Curriculum and Evaluation, Jeju had the highest average scaled scores in Korean and math in the CSAT for the 2018 academic year. The average scaled score on the island for the Korean test was 102.3, 4.5 points higher than the national average of 97.8. The average score on both types of the math test also exceeded the national average. Jeju has now had the highest average CSAT scores in the country for nine years running since the test for the 2010 academic year. The students and general staff at Jeju National University now have more power to change school policies. The JNU Professors Association officially established a university senate on Tuesday. The new deliberative body includes representatives from four associations, including those for civil servants, students and teaching assistants. The number of professors on the Senate is limited to no more than half of the total members. The previous JNU Council had comprised mostly professors. Accordingly, the Senate will now incorporate the ideas of other members of the university community when it considers issues ranging from curriculum and policy revisions to college closures and human resources. Hundreds of people gathered Tuesday at Halle Gymnasium for the inaugural ceremony for the Jeju team that will compete in the National Sports Festival. The festival begins Friday, October 12th in Jeollabukdo. The roughly 250 people at the ceremony included Governor Won Hee Dong, Council Speaker Kim Tae Seok, and Education Superintendent Lee Sung Moon, as well as the directors of various organizations the principals of schools with student-athletes, the athletes themselves, and members of area sports associations. Attendees shared their high hopes and firm determination to win at the upcoming games. Jeju is sending 696 people to the mainland, 515 athletes, and 181 staff. The local squad will participate in 34 events, and it has set a goal of bringing home more than 80 medals. Everyone in a car must now buckle up. That is one of a number of revisions to traffic regulations that just went into effect. Here's Mike Lehman with the details. It isn't at all uncommon for passengers in the back seats of vehicles to not use their seat belts. But currently, only the driver and passengers in the front seat have been subject to fines should they not wear theirs. However, according to the recently revised traffic laws that took effect September 28th, all those within a vehicle on all of Korea's roads must be wearing a seatbelt whenever their vehicle is in motion. The driver will be fined 30,000 won if any of their passengers violates this new law. The fine will jump to 60,000 won if the passenger is 13 years or younger, or if a child of six years or younger is not in a car seat. 그 오늘부터는 그 모든 차량의 모든 전 좌석에 탑승할 때는 반드시 안전벨트를 매야 됩니다. 어 그리고 이제 안전벨트를 뭐 매지 않았을 경우에는 그 운전자에게 그 3만 원의 과태료를 부과하게 되는데요. 
Additionally, taxis and buses are not exempt from the law, except for city buses, where wearing a seatbelt is still not mandatory. If a taxi or bus driver tells their passengers to put on their seatbelts, they are then immune to the fines. There have also been some changes made to parking on hills. Drivers are required to put their handbrake on, turn their wheels towards the curb, and also place a block in front of or behind a tire. If these measures are not undertaken, a fine of 40,000 won will be given. The revision also includes safety rules about riding bicycles. Police are now able to stop cyclists and give them a breathalyzer test. If a cyclist's blood alcohol content is found to be 0.05% or more, they will be fined 30,000 won, the same as car drivers. If a cyclist refuses the breathalyzer test, a 100,000 won fine will be imposed. While there is currently no penalty, helmets are now mandatory for anyone on a bicycle. If someone should fail to pay a fine for too long, they will be unable to receive an international driver's license. Mike Laidman, KCTV. The popular and comedic performance of the Cheju Nanda Company is staged daily at 5 p.m. and again at 8 p.m. on Friday and Saturday at the Nanta Theatre in Cheju City. Jeju will be feeling the effects of Tropical Storm Kongre Friday. It will be extremely windy and wet, so organizers have delayed this year's Chilshimni Festival from this weekend to October 19th to the 21st. Here's your forecast. The morning low in Jeju City will be 21 and the afternoon high 24 degrees. In Sogipo, temperatures will fall between 21 and 25. In Songtai, the low before lunch will be 21 and the high later on again, 25 degrees. Similar temperatures are expected across the island in in the morning low at higher elevations like Song Panak will be 18 and the afternoon high just 19 degrees. Taking a look at the marine forecast, winds will be out of the northeast and east at 14 to 20 meters per second, and seas will be very rough between 3 and 5 meters. And here's what's in store for us over the next few days. That brings us to the end of today's newscast. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll tune in next time. Until then, find us online at eng.kctvcheju.com. Shichang Jerebun, kumapsumida.